What's up guys? Back at it again with another video. I have the uh <laughs> You're here. not Daniel. Damn, Daniel, back at it again with the white bands. Anyway, um we're back with another video here. Got a couple of well lots of computer related stuff, so most of my viewers will enjoy this I think. Um or they'll question your financial decisions. Okay that too. But uh getting to the point we have a couple of things to uh, accomplish today. I have this computer here along with a metric truckload of other computers that are over here that we're going to be testing, uh, including this iMac and all of those Dells. There's a few Optiplexes and Inspirons in there. Right there. <laughs> nice. Um, anyway, yeah, we're going to be getting to that after Chris is done repasting my MacBook Pro. This is the uh, early 2008 one, which was the subject of one of my past videos, just a couple of videos ago. So he's going to be doing that over here. I am going to be working on this, which is one of the computers I got. Chris, where did we get? Where did you get all those computers? I got it from a friend friend's computer shop. It was all destined to go to the e-waste bin, and he said, "If there's anything in here you'd like, go ahead and take it." And well, I found a bunch of shit. Right. And so naturally, we worked out a little bit of a deal where I went again, went ahead and purchased ear pods for Chris because he has always wanted these. And so I bought those, and then in return, I got a metric truckload of Dell computers to mess with. But why would you do that for a set of mediocre ear AirPods when you could just use? Earpods. Okay, Nick. Anyway, um, yeah, so I got a bunch of computers to mess with. Those are going to be the subject of this video. But also, uh, you may notice this early 2016 12-inch Retina MacBook on my desk. <laughs> we were at Best Buy today, and you I was... made a dumb decision. I did, yeah. Uh, I went ahead and purchased this MacBook here, and it was on sale. This one was an open box, so it only cost me 800 bucks. And uh, it's in pretty good shape. When we when they showed it to us, it had a bunch of like smudges and marks all over it. It looked really ugly, but I bought it anyway because I started to wipe them off with my thumb and I knew they came off. And as you can see, the MacBook cleaned up very nicely. This lid was full of scuff marks and what I thought were scratches, but as you can see, it cleaned up perfectly. Things in really good condition. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit questionable, or the only the only cosmetic blemish that's an actual blemish I can see, is there's a small ding in the side over here. But other than that, this thing's in really excellent shape. The keyboard isn't even that worn. Um, it looks pretty good. The battery, we're still kind of the jury's still out on that one per se, because um, coconut battery's bullshit. Yeah pretty much we checked it with coconut battery and we're getting kind of weird results so we're pretty much just going to let it charge fully and see what happens there but the battery only has 12 cycles on it so it's in really good condition this thing was lightly used I think I mean aside from the obvious you know grossness that it used to um, have it it's uh, in pretty good shape so I decided to buy that I I mean I have my MacBook Pro here as y'all may know but I mean I saw this and I was like you know forget it um, this is gonna be good for you know if I am in let's say I'm in bed one night and I don't want to use my phone because I want a little bit of a larger screen but I don't want to pull the MacBook Pro out of the desk setup I can just pull this out and use this to watch YouTube videos I mean it's good enough for that so that's cool about specs it is the early 2016 as previously mentioned it's the base model the 1.1 gigahertz with 8 gigs of ram and intel graphics but that's okay it does have the 256 gig ssd so that's decent and i mean overall it's pretty all right for what it is so yeah that's the macbook anyway before this video gets any longer i can i can tell this video is going to be really long so i'm just going to vlog what do you expect yeah it's probably going to be 20 30 minutes long anyway uh that's the macbook so got that uh, and I also managed to pick up a little a dongle because obviously <laughs> this only has one uh, USB-C port on it so therefore I bought this for $20 which is uh, just a splitter it goes out to the charger over there that's only a charge port uh, HDMI and USB 3.1 uh, regular type A port there so that was that was cool I decided to get that and I also picked up a just a cheap sleeve for it so I can just keep it protected when I'm not using it. So other than that, that's the MacBook. Welcome to the family. 
Other than that, we have this uh, Dell computer here. This is actually a Dell Studio XPS 435 mini tower. And uh, this thing is circa about 2008. But one thing you might notice if you have a keen eye is it has a Core i7 in it. So this is a an i7 920 based PC. And it's going to be the replacement for the Core 2 Quad custom build that was right here that I was using, which is now behind that iMac. But this is a little more, a little newer, a little more powerful, and uh, I put six gigs of RAM in it. So the other one had about that same. I think it had five gigs or some weird number like that. Anyway, that's that. This thing is fully functional. I pulled the SSD from the custom build and stuck it in here. 60 gig SSD. And then the only part that I'm missing is the graphics card. Now I used to have this 6670 in there, but as you can see, the fans kind of. Uh, Jimmy rigged on there and it's powered by Molex and unfortunately this whole computer is just SATA ports straight up. This card here which I just purchased for it, the Radeon RX 550 has no external power of any kind because it's you know doesn't draw that much so I can just slot this in and you know be on my way. So this is the card I decided to purchase for this. This seemed like a pretty good proposition. I mean it was only $80 brand new so and it seems to perform pretty well for what it is. Man, you should have gotten an RX 480. <laughs> a, uh, a 1050 was at least $60, $80 more than this, and the performance difference wasn't that big. So Let's I decided. Talk about that 1060 we saw though. Oh yeah, and then there, we saw a 1060. There was a six gig card that was like they were asking like $390 for it. And how much did you say there was supposed to be? Closer to 250 because I got mine for 240, like a six gig. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Anyway, let's go ahead and pop this card open and we're gonna go ahead and install it in this computer. So here's the card, it's pretty small. I mean, obviously this is an entry level uh, video card. AMD really hasn't had a product like this besides, you know, besides like the four, four, well the 480 is even a little bit higher end than this, but AMD hasn't targeted this market in quite a while. Oh, there it is, all right. So, there she is. Pretty simple. Looks pretty decent. It's even got a little bit of a carbon fiber design in the uh, the things throughout. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these port covers out, and we're gonna slot it in the PC. So let's go ahead and do that. Okie dokie. So here is the PC. Here's the inside of it. Not too pretty. I mean, it's a pre-built, so what do you expect? But it is a Dell, so therefore I have to like it. <laughs> here is the Patriot SSD there. Sorry, my iPhone's having a little bit of difficulty focusing there. So, um, but. I, I want to interject real quick with the whole I like Dell's thing. So, you will notice, actually, any anybody on this channel right now, go back and look at, go watch uh, Lazy Game Reviews' uh, Tech Tales on Dell, and tell me that Ryan here doesn't look like Michael Dell when he was younger. Oh, God. Therefore, he is living the Dell 0304 game. Pretty much. All right, anyway, there. this thing does have triple channel memory, which is kind of interesting. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't know why this phone is not focusing. That's kind of irritating. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and slot this card in real quick. I do have the uh, the PCI covers there. just haven't put them in yet. I'm just going to go ahead and slot the card in first. We'll go ahead and go from there. So it is a little bit of a tight fit because this is a micro ATX based computer. All right, so there it is. Sorry I didn't get the uh, video of me actually slotting it in, but just imagine me putting a graphics card in a cheap PC. That's what happened. So, fits pretty well. I mean, it is a little bit tight at the bottom. <clears throat> That's what she said. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these port covers back in. I actually have them over here by the MacBook. And then we will go ahead and plug this thing in, make sure it boots up and install some drivers. All right, will it boot? Let's find out. Okay, it turned yellow for a second, so I was kind of yeah, kind of skeptical. Like... Aha! There it goes. Sweet. What a wonder! Just a little bit of microfiber and some glass cleaner can do for this black, glossy computer. It's installing, so we're good there. This is going to be my new secondary PC over here at this house. So, uh, yeah. That's cool. Okay, so I'm still getting stuff set up over here on the Dell XPS Mini Tower. So, in the meantime, just a little update on the MacBook. Got everything, well, 
most things the way I want it. I have no software on it right now, but I'll fix that later. Tested the hub, thing works, it's pretty cool. Uh, over here, these are three of the four computers we're gonna be testing. So we have a full size, or I guess it's called a mini tower still, but uh, Optiplex 755. It's a Core 2 base, just like all these are. Designed for Windows Vista, so it seems pretty decent. It also, let's see, it has a, a Vista and an XP key on it, that's cool. But uh, it yeah. Probably the Vista key is an upgrade edition. Yeah. DVD RW drive, interesting. I guess we can pop the side off. Of course, it's this side. Um, I used to have one of these. Or actually, I used to have an Optiplex 620. So, see this one it has RAM. Looks like it has a processor. No graphics card, no hard drive, but I think it has integrated video, so that's fine. So this one should be ready to test, just to see if it posts. So that's nice. This is an Optiplex 745 uh, desktop form factor. So, yeah. That also has a DVD RW drive in it, so that's cool. Another Core 2 Windows Vista machine. Let's go ahead and pop this one open, see what's in there. Has RAM, has a processor, integrated video, so that one should be good to go. Uh, does it have a hard drive? Ah, that one does have a hard drive. Okay, cool. So that one's a complete system. That'll be interesting. And then the the last, well that that's actually the last one there, but this one is an Inspiron 530S, so a little more consumer oriented. Obviously, being an Inspiron it is. We have a Pentium dual core, Windows Vista Basic. Ew. So, ooh, this one has a multi-card reader. Actually, that, that XPS does as well. That's a blanking plate, or I guess, no, that's the optical drive bay, but, oh, yeah, I see, pops open like that. Okay, uh, let's see, can this one be easily opened? Yep, it can. All right, so, as for this one, no RAM, that's an issue. Processor looks to still be there. Uh, does it have a hard drive? No. Okay, so this one's kind of more bare bones, but I'll have to probably swap the RAM over and just, just to see the posts. And that can go from there. Might need to pick up some hard drives eventually. But yeah, so those are the computers we're going to be testing. How are we coming on the uh, MacBook Pro here? Eh, almost. Sick. Almost. Now so he's pulling the motherboard out because obviously the processor's on the other side, so you got to repaste it just so the GPU doesn't make a die. So that's what's going on over here. Other than that, not much is happening. Just trying to, uh, you know, get everything situated. We got a lot going on right now. So we got the MacBook back together. We're gonna yes, make sir. sure it works. And let's see here. Oh, took the disc. Windows Vista Home, home Basic. Windows Vista. Are you on basic something? Yes, sir. Uh, no, we do not want to automatically update. We want to just... Oh, look. It works! Look at that. Upgrade 32-bit home basic. Yep. Okay, so I still have to get a mouse, but this is going to be the new test bench slash computer station. So we're going to be testing all these computers. First off, I think I'm going to start with the big Optiplex. So let's start there. Okay, so this one has one stick of RAM and no hard drive. So we're just going to see if it posts. That's not a good start. Hmm. Well, that doesn't exactly look good. So uh, I think this one's borked. Well, damn. All right, parts machine, I suppose. Okay, so this next one is the Optiplex 745. This is a complete system, so maybe it'll work. That's a good sign so far. Those should be going out, though. That's the thing. Hmm. Okay. Three and four. Those are diagnostic lights, so that means something is something screwed. But I can't remember what those mean. I have to go look it up real quick. All right, so I looked it up here. Three, four means a memory configuration failure. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the RAM as I did here and try it. Something I did find interesting is that this has a 750 gig Seagate hard drive in it. So 
that'll be interesting. I might move that into a different computer because 750 gigs, that's that's a lot. That's one of the biggest hard drives I have over here. So that could be useful in another system. This one ends up not working. But let me go ahead and plug this back in. We'll see if it works. I'm just going to put one of these RAM sticks back in and see what happens. Aha, we have life. Diagnostic lights are still on. That's kind of interesting. There's probably something else wrong with this thing. But it, it posted at least. So we have an Optiplex 745. Core 2 6300, 1.86 GHz. Okay, that's probably a pretty uh, early one. Two megabytes of cache? One gig, that's all I put in there for now. Um, yeah, other than that, should be Gucci. Let's see if it boots into anything. Oh, diagnostic lights went out. Okay, perfect. So it looks like it has a copy of Windows on it. That's cool. Okay, so one of those sticks is bad. I'll just have to, you know, see which one it is and go from there. But this computer is functional, so that's cool. Let me just make sure there's nothing inappropriate coming up on the screen. Well, that, that doesn't look good. Hmm. Might have other issues. <laughs> so this one, you can see how loose that port is. So there may be something wrong with the surface mount. Like that's not supposed to be that loose. So there might be something else wrong here. As you can see, it's not uh, not doing anything there. That also might just be the hard drive. So I'm not 100% sure there. With that said, I may just part this one out. Not sure. Go ahead and see if I can try it again here. There we go. But yeah, uh, this one seems to work um, mostly. Not sure if the something's wrong with the graphics card or what have you. But let's try starter repair. Why not? See now the graphics look fine now, so it might just be something with the install. So okay, so this one seems to work. So let's move on to the last one there. Well, the, the third one. is right there. My yes, D came in the mail today. Yeah, dude. All right. Okay, here's the Inspiron 530S. I just pulled one of these sticks and shoved it in there. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, so I don't know which one's bad. But let's see what happens. Well, that's a fan. There it goes. Hey. So this one works. That's cool. System info. Pentium dual core E2180, 2 gigahertz. I only put a gig of RAM of it in it. Other than that, there's no hard drive or anything. 2008. Sweet. Alright, so that one, that one, this one's functional. Cool. All right, now on to the last one, the big old XPS 400 with the Pentium D. Let's see if that one works. Here's the Dell XPS 400. I shoved another one of those sticks in, so I don't know if any of those RAM sticks are bad or it was just that computer, but we're gonna try it here. So let me go and plug it in and try it. So far, so good. Okay, cool. We got a post. Well, that's fine. I'll just put. I'll just have a gig of RAM in each of these, which is fine. I mean, I'm not planning on using these for anything. Uh, this one is a Pentium D 2.8, 800 megahertz. So this is the uh, a later model, 64 bit. That's cool. Uh, 667 megahertz RAM. It's fine. Only got one gig in there, but it's all good. Uh, cool. All right. So this one is functional. Excellent. I'll probably just pull the RAM out of this. I mean, this is a Pentium D machine, so it's really pretty much useless. But it does have a graphics card in it. I'm not exactly sure what it is, though. But, yeah. There we go. With that said, pretty much everything has been done. Here is the XPS, or the Studio XPS here. 435 MT in its final resting place. Looks pretty good, all cleaned up. Got the graphics card installed here. Go ahead and pull up Specy. Just take a quick look. No, I don't want to download the update. i7-920, Bloomfield, 1366. There you go. Four cores, eight threads, as you can see. So, RAM, it's got six gigs, triple channel, so that's cool. Uh, motherboard's a Dell. We have the RX 550 graphics card installed, two gig, 
26 Celsius, that's running nice and cool. Then we have the Patriot Blaze, which is 60 gigs. So, yeah, there we go. So, with that said, that's going to wrap up this vlog. I think we've accomplished a lot today. So, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you later.